We posted our EVGA SC2 1080 Ti review a few days ago, but for some of you, that was not enough. You wanted to know, where is the FTW3? Well, we didn't have one then, but we have one now. This is the FTW3 that just came in. It is a three-fan cooler using the ICX sensor placement we've detailed previously, and it is a two-slot cooler, which in this current generation of 1080 Ti cards is not all that common. So we're going to be taking this apart today, and I've been told it is not easy to reassemble, so not looking forward to that, but uh, we're going to try and document the teardown process so that you can follow it yourself if for some reason you needed to. Before getting to the teardown, this coverage is brought to you by iFixit.com, who provided the toolkits for the job. You can go to iFixit.com slash GamersNexus and use code GamersNexus for $5 off at checkout. And I have been told that they have a toolkit that is called the PC Essentials Toolkit. It's a bit cheaper than this one. We're using the ProTac toolkit, but it has fewer uh, screwdrivers and things like that, and you can save a bit of money, more of the essential stuff. So let's get into the teardown here. We will be starting with probably the back plate because that's where these things normally start. And although the Founders Edition cards use a very tiny Phillips screws for everything, this one looks like uh, they're, what, what size is this in the kit? It is called a, a 10. So we've got a 10, size 10 screwdriver. Um, so first of all, Phillips screws for the back plate strictly, those feed into other screws that kind of bolt through the PCB and connect to the base plate on the other side. These four screws are spring retention, spring retains, they go to the cooler proper. And then you can see there are some hex or Allen key screws in here for the face plate. And that secures strictly uh, the face plate, I believe, to the cooler proper along with these spring retention screws that are going to the base plate. So th these screws actually keep the base plate attached to the shroud and to the cooler, uh, which how, depending on how you look at it is either really nice or really annoying. I tend to actually like it if you're only trying to get to the card underneath and not trying to dismantle the entire thing because it's a, it's a bit more work to do that. Oh, there's a lot of screws actually. And they're, these are very tight. Start in the middle. Okay. So 3, 6, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I think there are 22 total screws just for the back plate. A little excessive EVGA, just like the force required to remove them. Under the tamper seal. All right, this should be free now. This is held on by thermal pads, I'm sure. They've gone a bit, a bit crazy with the thermal pads lately, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. All right, so we're going to pull the spudger and slice that. Okay, I already met with a uh, cable one. Cable number one. So this is attached to the LED. There's the back side of your chokes and MOSFETs. These things will stretch if you're not careful, so I try to guide them as I remove them. And then we're gonna put this, that side down. So, backside cable, that'll be easy to remember, so I'm not gonna take a note of that one. This last one goes into a nut on the other side, so you have to Hold that while you remove it. Okay, the world's most screws for a backplate award goes to EVGA. All right, cool. There's your backplate making contact. The EVGA backplates are among the few we've tested that actually make an impact on cooling. That impact can be both positive and negative. Without the thermal pads, we were seeing somewhat of a heat trapping effect previously. With them, we see that they actually do, they don't help with GPU diode temperature, but they help with temperatures elsewhere on the board. Or if they do help with the GPU diode, it's, it's very minimal. And one of the EVGA ICX sensors is right there, by the way. Not the most useful place to take a measurement, but doesn't hurt to have the extra sensor. Uh, it does at least tell you if the back plate's causing problems or not. So that's nice to have as a diagnostics tool. So 
So this is ready to go free. I think we're going to remove the ones from the back or the expansion area first. Two, three Phillips, and then two of the DBI hex heads, which I think are a size, maybe a size four millimeter. What is that? 3.8? Five? Five millimeter. So on the magnetic mat, we've got the left side partitioned for the IO. I just put all the bottom stuff down here because I know where it goes. I'm going to save this space for anything underneath because that's the stuff that is going to throw me. So now we're at a place where we can pull this cooler off. I'm going to try and pull with the PCB down so we can leave as many thermal pads. Well, actually, you know what? Let's do it this way because I think, I think I'd rather have the thermal pads come off and stay on the cooler. Okay, a lot of cables holding us in place. Okay, so one uh, bottom left, two right there. But they don't build it for you to take apart, so I'm not going to fault them. It's just more, uh, more stuff to keep track of. Okay, first one's free. Second one. Third one. <laughs> What? Two more. All right, so we've got, what is this over here? Power? Power, uh, fans, fans, so three fans, and then a couple LED cables. Uh, LED cable on the back side, which, where's that part of the back plate? This one right here. That goes to the EVGA logo. I think this is all RGB LED. If it, if it weren't, then uh, it wouldn't be 2017. So I think that's RGB LED. That's probably controllable through software of some kind. We'll look into that later. And then we've got, if you're curious, two 8-pin for the power. OK, so for the cooler, we've got the cold plate here that you can see I've aligned it with the card. So cold plate, GPU. We've seen that before. Don't need to clean it off to show you again. It looks like these are 8 mil heat pipes under here, which is a bit bigger than some of the manufacturers do. Sometimes they do 10, but that's pretty rare these days. Sapphire tends to do that the most. So heat pipes. Thermal pads for each of the VRAM modules, including the missing one, which this, I've been keeping an eye on this. The same VRAM module is missing on every single 1080 Ti card we've opened so far. Uh, I was just curious if it's based on anything they've disabled on the GPU or what. But same one so far. For the core VRM, there are a whole bunch of E6930 packages, which are dual end MOSFETs. They combine high and low side FETs. Uh, diode and uh, a whole bunch of stuff in one package. But because of the thermal solution, which is actually, like we saw with the SC2, a copper heat pipe routed into the inductor and MOSFET area specifically. Actually, this is, you can tell this is where the inductors go one, because of the imprint, and two, because it's indented. Uh, the FETs go here, and uh, the driver ICs are in there as well. So, heat pipe, copper plate, for pulling the heat away, uh, and then capacitor banks right here, capacitor banks right here, uh, and then your VRAM. So E6930 is for the FETs. If we count them up, there are two, three, four, six, two, and we've got another VRM up here as well, if you didn't notice that one already. For shunts, uh, we've got shunts here, here, and here. If you want to do a shunt mod and short those, that is where they are located. And uh, the rest of it would be visible by taking the base plate off separately from the cooler. So we can, we can try and do that. It looks like it's going to be held on just by these screws in the corners here. OK, one, two, three. Okay, got it. So for this, uh, here's our base plate orients this way clearly. And we'll just go ahead and put that down for a second. So uh, basically, if I were to peel this up, you would see more of the copper plate. That's what we looked at on the other side, if you remember. Heat pipe there. And that carries through to the right side 
of the cooler, which we can show here. Yep, carries all the way through. So heat pipe goes all the way through over to here, which really just helps spread the heat out over a bigger surface area. Utilize some more of that aluminum base plate, which does actually pull a significant amount of heat off. We show that with the Founders Edition cards as well. These, these do a lot for you. And as long as there's an airflow of some kind over them, you'll keep the VRAM cold. We show that with our uh, upcoming final Titan XP hybrid mod video. Um, these are the so-called fin pins. That's what EVGA names them. They are just aluminum standoffs that add more surface area. Some wicking over there would help you cool that as well. Very tiny stacks here. Now, how much do these help? I am not sure. That's not a whole lot more surface area. You're, it's kind of like Braille in terms of height. It's not a lot of surface area, but in theory, it helps. So that's what we have for the base plate. Pretty straightforward. For the cooler, we've got uh, really everything we already saw. The only new, th new information here, well, there's a few things actually. The heat pipes going from the GPU cold plate to the VRM side of the cooler. So that's a significant amount. That's five heat pipes right there of varying thicknesses. Uh, the two main ones here for the VRAM and the GPU. And then you can also see these are those closed off fins while these are those open ones. These are the new L-shaped fins that EVGA has been doing actually right here as well for the uh, FET coin. It improves surface area a bit when you're contacting with the thermal pad. As you can see here, there's actually a grill in the thermal pad where those were contacting. So the idea is to leave them open enough that air still gets through while improving contact area to your transfer medium, which is a thermal pad. Because without these, if you're just going straight fins, which is what these ones are in the middle, straight fins, clearly less surface area. Yes, it does still work. We've tested it in the past uh, with last year's FTW thermal pad testing. Does still work, but these work a whole lot better uh, and still allow for airflow. So I think that pretty much sums up the cooler other than the three fans, which I'm not sure if I even mentioned those. So uh, that's the EVGA FTW3. We will be testing this separately as always. Thermal pads everywhere, as is the trend with EVGA lately. And here's the PCB one last time. Uh, so it is a two slot cooler. It's a bit skinnier than some of the other stuff we've tested, like the Extreme Aorus and the Gaming X. Same thickness as the SC2, which we already reviewed. The price on the SC2 when we originally reviewed it was $720. It's gone up to $750. So kind of along with everyone else now, not as special as it was originally. This, I'm not 100% sure of the final price. I think it's going to be $780. In that case, it is one of the most expensive 1080 Ti cards that will be on the market, perhaps. Uh, alongside some of the liquid cooled ones like the Seahawk and uh, theoretically a hybrid when, he, when and if EVGA makes one of those. Um, so it is an expensive card. Now, will it really do a whole lot for you? We'll find out in testing. We'll have a full review for you separately. As always, subscribe for that to make sure you don't miss it. You can, you can help us out directly on patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Links in the description below for more information as always. Uh, and also we've got the store, store.gamersnexus.net. Or if you want to not buy something from us and buy something from iFixit. Use code GamersNexus for $5 off. Thank you for watching. As always, I'll see you all next time.